Okay, so that was a very good talk. It's good. So uh, the next talk, we have actually uh, Marcin will be with us. Hello. Uh, do I pronounce your name correctly, Marcin? <laughs> uh, Marcin, exactly. That's yes, that's perfect. good. So where uh, are you calling in from? Uh, from Poland, Warsaw. Wow, good, good. So, uh, yeah, um, actually, yeah, we want to know more about uh, your talk. So uh, uh, when you're ready, you can start sharing your screen. So, um, yeah, hypertech is, is very, very interesting. I've never heard about that. I want to learn more about it. So, yeah. Uh, right. Um, OK, I see that you're ready to go. So I'll let you uh, take us away. Thank you. Thank you for, for this introduction and um, hello everyone. I want to talk about uh, Hyperduck. It's a new language for web templating and document generation. Uh, I'm sure all of you know very well what web templating is. I want to show you a possibly better way to do web templating and document generation. Uh, in the beginning, I uh, would like to tell you a few words of myself about uh, the motivation behind uh, developing a new language for web computing. Uh, and then I will present HyperTag, uh, taking into account two most important aspects. One is uh, how to uh, write clean code for document generation, for HTML, HTML generation. And uh, the other key aspect is how to make this code as modular as possible, which is very important for building large and complex web applications. And I will conclude with some final uh, final remarks. Um, I will not be able to uh, present all the details of the language because there are too many of them, but I invite you to uh, see the website hyperpack.io where all the information is uh, very uh, horribly documented. So let's go. Um, I'm a Python programmer. Uh, I've been programming Python for many years. Uh, my profession is data science. Uh, I'm a data scientist. I, I've been working in this area for 20 years. So I'm not really a professional web developer. However, I uh, built over time uh, two large web applications, large websites. One was Tune IT in 2009, and the other one, which exists uh, today, is Paperity, uh, which I built in 2014. Uh, and uh, these two complex web applications gave me some uh, insight and experience regarding uh, also web translating and HTML document generation. Uh, also, I uh, designed and implemented uh, a few other languages before uh, related, related to my work in data science and in web scraping. Uh, so HyperTag, which is designed and implemented by myself, it's not the first language that, that I uh, developed. Uh, and uh, I can say that Hyperpack is a result of many years of experience in both web development and uh, language design and parser implementation. Uh, so here is a screenshot of, of, of the paper website. Uh, and uh, now, what was the goal? Uh, there are mainly two goals. Uh, there are goals when designing this new language. Uh, I wasn't satisfied with existing separating languages and uh, I needed something that uh, satisfies two uh, goals. One is to have uh, clean templating code as clean as possible, uh, easy to read, easy to maintain, and another thing is to have modular code uh, we, where you can have code reuse and, and you don't have to repeat yourself. Uh, so let's start with the first thing, how to achieve clean code in web templating. Uh, if we take a look at existing most popular templating languages for Python, uh, which is Jinja and Django template engine, uh, template language, 
they are both quite similar. Uh, we can see in, in a simple example that this code is very convoluted. It contains a lot of a lot of boilerplate boiler code, a uh, lot of special symbols. Uh, it's hard to read. This example uh, prints uh, prints a list of username. Uh, it's not not any complex uh, things to do. This example was taken from actually from Jinja documentation, uh, and you can see here that less than half of this code does anything useful, and the rest is is just uh, tags and special symbols. Uh, and uh, what's worse, uh, this code is intermediate. So uh, actually, you have you can see here two different languages. Uh, one is HTML, and the, the other one is the template syntax. <coughs> and uh, these two different languages are mixed together, uh, such that when you when you read this code, you have to uh, you have to switch uh, between uh, Analyzing HTML code and analyzing template code, template syntax, every few characters. So I call it spaghetti code, um, which is not very helpful for readability of this code and not very helpful for reducing the the, the amount of code that you have to type. Uh, it doesn't look very well. And uh, if if we think think for a while, uh, we will discover that. This approach to weapon plating actually is uh, very old. It, it has origins in uh, in the days of PHP. PHP was the first language that took a similar approach, namely uh, injecting of some foreign template syntax into uh, the raw HTML document and mixing uh, these two languages together. Uh, so we all know that PHP is somehow outdated uh, as of today, and uh, you know Python compatible languages uh, are still using this uh, not not very good approach to uh, to write templates. Uh, so the question is, of course, can we do something better? Uh, here is the same example written in Hypertask. As you can see, this code is much cleaner. It's uh, much, much less code to write and much easier to read. Uh, the question is how to how to achieve this this, this kind of readability. And uh, the idea is to use indentation uh, for, uh, for for structuring uh, your template code. Uh, actually, there are three different ideas that that have to combine together. The first one is to uh, come up with a single language for both the templating uh, structure and for the contents of, of, of the document. So instead of using these two original languages uh, as before, we want to have just one language that covers the entire document, including the templating logic. And uh, when we do this, uh, we can also use uh, the idea of using indentation instead of closing tag uh, so that we can uh, can avoid just can just avoid closing tag and uh, get shorter uh, more readable code uh, in the python world we know very well how indentation helps how much it helps in achieving more readable readable, readable code uh, and you know it's Kind of irony that uh, this idea of using indentation for web development for web templating it uh, it was first uh, applied in the world of Ruby in some template languages for Ruby uh, while in Python world we still uh, use mainly uh, this, this templating languages uh, based on the idea derived from 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 the days of PHP. Uh, and the third thing uh, which is important here is a different way of using special symbols in the language. Uh, because as you can see here, uh, this is a comparison of, uh, of the same code written in HTML, in raw HTML, and in TypeStack. 
uh, here you can see that uh, HTML uses special symbols, the angle brackets, uh, very intensely, uh, which decreases readability and is quite annoying for programmers to type these angle brackets as a single character. Uh, but we can uh, switch and, and, and change this instead of using special characters to mark parts inside text. We can assume that our document is a tree of tags, and only in some places we have um, text nodes, and we use special characters to delimit this text node inside a larger tree of different tags and different types of blocks. Uh, so this is the idea, and as you can see, by uh, just forgetting about closing tags, uh, using indentation instead, we can achieve much more readability, much better readability. Uh, okay. Uh, so this was that, that was a very simple example. And now I would like to show you a few more uh, examples of hypertax syntax. Uh, so the first one is uh, inline syntax we can uh, we can say space, we can we can write more concise code if we if you want uh, by putting several tags on the same line if we separate them by special symbol column. And we can also put uh, the textual contents on the, on the same line as a, as a tag. Uh, we can write multi-line text, <coughs> uh, like here. Uh, we can just put these vertical bars that indicate the text block. Uh, we can put them on each subsequent line. Uh, or we can just use uh, this special symbol on the first line and uh, drop drop the subsequent one. Uh, this vertical bar, the second one, is optional here. We can we can omit it. Uh, we also have uh, auto escaping. Um, so there are actually three types uh, of text block. Uh, plain text block is uh, is, it starts with a vertical bar, and uh, this text block is automatically escaped, HTML escaped. So this ampersand will be converted to an HTML entity automatically. Uh, you don't you don't have to care about it. Uh, but if you want to embed, inject some raw HTML inside your text, you can also do it if you put a slash at the beginning of this text block instead of a vertical bar, uh, which signifies uh, a raw HTML text, text block. And there's also the third type, the button block, uh, which avoids uh, evaluation of expressions. So here in these blocks, expressions can be embedded, and there's also the button block if you don't want uh, to run the expression evaluation. Uh, now the next thing is uh, tags and attributes of tags. You can uh, write attributes similar to what you would do in uh, raw HTML, uh, but can also embed expressions both uh, on the on the attribute list and inside text box. And here's one of the ways to, em to embed expressions uh, by using uh, single braces. Curly braces. Uh, there is also an alternative syntax with the use of, of the dollar sign. Uh, and here, uh, expressions can take arbitrary form. So Hypertax is very flexible in how uh, how we can write your expressions. You can use actually all operators and all the syntax that you know from Python, which is quite rare, I think, for templating languages. And of course, we can uh, have uh, different control structures. Uh, here's an example of a loop. Uh, and here we can see conditional block and try out block, uh, loops, for loops, while loops, and conditional, conditional blocks. They work similar to what they do in Python, uh, although, of course, Syntax is a little bit different here. Here we have here here we have uh, some content, some body.
body uh, it can be text content or or you can uh, just provide any any structured content that you that you want uh, and uh, regarding the try block it works a little bit different than in python because uh, we don't really care about uh, the exact type the exact class of exception that 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 is raised uh, during rendering of a given piece of document. Usually, there is only one reason why why a given piece of code fails, and we just want to provide some alternative path of execution of rendering. So here we assume that cars is a dictionary of cars and their prices, uh, but not every maker. Uh, is present in the dictionary. So if there is a price for a given car, we want to print it. But if uh, a given name is missing, we want to provide an alternative uh, message. Uh, and with try block, we can do it very easily and in a clean way. Uh, I uh, maybe uh, will add one more thing uh, to the previous slide. As you can see here, uh, with the use of this syntax, uh, where we use indentation and where we use uh, the vertical bars for uh, marking text blocks, uh, it's uh, in many cases it's possible to uh, maintain a vertical separation between uh, text and text content, which, which is very very useful and enhances the readability of the code even in a farther because you can put tax on the left and text on the right. And when you take a look at the code, you instantly uh, see which parts of the code uh, provide tiling and provide HTML structure, and which parts of the code are just raw text that will be displayed to the user. Uh, okay, and um, I will uh, show also this comparison uh, at the end of this, of this part of the talk, uh, once again we have uh, we have uh, some uh, example template code written in hypertax compared to uh, the same code written in Django and Jinja templated languages. Uh, so you can notice how how much difference there is between these languages in Django Jinja. Uh, we have to use a lot of boilerplate code. We have to use closing tags. We have to use closing statements for 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 control statements, uh, and and we have to use double braces in multi in multi multiple places. Uh, all these things reduce uh, readability of the code. In HyperTag is just five special symbols uh, that need to be added to the actual actual contents of the, of the document. And although uh, we can notice one thing, in Django and Jinja, we, can, we cannot write uh, LAN of items. This is a very simple thing to, that we may want to do. And in Python, you know, we, we would just write LAN of items. In Django and Jinja, it's more confusing because you have to use a filter. Uh, uh, you cannot just apply the, the standard LAN function. Which, which also adds to the complexity and, and uh, of the language and difficulty of using it. Uh, I have to mention also that uh, this idea of using indentation to enhance the readability of templating code, it's not so new. It was already used in the world of Ruby in languages like Clean and Ham, and uh, it was it, it's also present in Pook in JavaScript. Uh, HyperTag was inspired by these languages, and I tried to take the best things from from these languages in terms of syntax, in terms of readability. Uh, and I think HyperTag is somehow maybe even uh, more cleaner and, and and more reasonable than these these original uh, approaches. And now uh, I want to go to the second part of the talk. And uh, present you uh, the more advanced features of HyperTag that are related to building modular code. Because when you build a large application, 
and to write a lot of code. Uh, it's very important to be able to somehow split this code into pieces and, how, and be able to reuse uh, these different pieces in different combinations with each other. So, uh, that's what modularity means. It, modularity means, uh, in the first place, separation of concepts that you can create uh, such small pieces of your code uh, in, in a typical programming language. Uh, we talk about functions and classes, but in weapon, weapon plating, it's, it's a different story. We need some other kinds of tools, of, of language structures that will allow us to separate concerns and to build these reu reusable pieces of code. Uh, because after that, when you have and you have the separation, you can reuse our code. And you know this is some, something contrary to code duplication. So whenever we see code duplication, it means that uh, we miss the code reuse. And when we start, if we start with raw HTML, we can see that HTML is uh, very notorious for code duplication. There are no means in HTML to deduplicate code. Uh, so here, majority of the code is duplicated. Uh, if we go to hypertag, uh, this example is a little bit shorter and a little bit more readable, but we still have duplicated code. These elements are duplicated. And uh, you know the question is how to deal with that. Uh, the idea, uh, could we, for example, uh, define our own custom tags? Uh, just like we have table as a standard tag, uh, could we have table row as our custom tag that could replace all these repetitions of these duplicated codes? And we could just provide the values of attributes to this custom tag, and uh, this tag will do the rest to, to generate the HTML that we need. We could do even better if we allow for positional attributes in these custom tags, uh, which is very similar to how. Uh, Arguments in functions, in Python functions, work. They, we can have keyword arguments or positional arguments. So, uh, if in such case, if we had such support uh, in the language, we could uh, make this code a lot shorter and and more readable. And in hypertag, we can do this. We can define custom tags. The way to do this is to use uh, so-called hypertag definition block. Uh, this custom tags we call here just hypertag with lowercase h. Uh, and we can define such custom tag uh, by using the special symbol person, person character, which introduces a new name, a new tag, and defines its attributes. An attribute can have a default value, like, like function in Python. And it has its body that will be uh, substituted for, for this hypertag name in every place of occurrence. So, we just reduce the duplication. We just have a one one copy of this part of code, and we insert uh, attributes which are variables. We we inject them in appropriate places in the HTML code in the body. Uh, so that's the way to do it in hypertag. And now we can reduce uh, this initial code that we saw in HTML. We can reduce just to these four lines of hypertag code. Uh, now the question is because standard tags can have a body in the place of occurrence. And the question is, can we also provide body to this custom tag? And the answer is yes, we can do this. We can do this. However, uh, we have to change the definition of our hyper tag to be able to recognize that, that a body was provided. Uh, so here, uh, we want to extend this uh, initial example. Uh, we printed a table with uh, two columns. One was the car name, the second column was, uh, was the price. And now we want to add the third column to this table, which contains rich text, which contains structured information, not just a single value, atomic value, but we want to put some funny quotes. We want to add styling to this funny quote. We want to put images add images to, to this information. So we end up with rich text that can cannot be passed by a, uh, for a single attribute. So that's the place where 
the ability to provide body to a custom tag uh, plays a role. And uh, to handle that, uh, we need to define a special body attribute, uh, which is done with the, the symbol at the at sign, uh, which marks that the first attribute is, is so-called body attribute. Uh, it will carry the uh, document tree of the actual body that was passed to the hyper tag in the place of occurrence. And typically, we will just want to inject uh, to, to paste this body in some place in our formal body. Uh, however, this is not the only thing we can do uh, because uh, hypertag is uh, somehow uh, special compared to other translating languages because it allows uh, here in this, this place uh, this body is represented is represented as a, a DON tree, a document object model tree, and uh, this body can be manipulated. So we can uh, not only paste it unchanged, but we can also analyze it, modify it before pasting. Uh, and here's an example how this can be done. This is somehow exceptional, I think, and not possible in any other translating engine I know. This example is uh, about building a table of contents for documents. Uh, a typical use case when writing, especially static documents, maybe not so common for web pages, but when you build and you write a static HTML document, you often want to have a table of contents at the beginning. And you know, uh, you can do it manually, but in such case, it's very hard to maintain this document if you add headings, if you add chapters. Uh, it's more difficult to remember to, to, to change the TLC at the beginning of the document appropriately. In HyperTag, you can write very short code that will uh, build this TLC automatically. And here you can see how to do this. We need to define a HyperTag called TLC here uh, that takes any body, any document as, a, as its actual body, and then uh, we assume that uh, all H2 headings are the headings that we are looking for that we want to put in the table of contents. So we are looking in, in the document for H2 headings. Uh, and uh, we print each of these headings inside uh, inside a list item, HTML element. Uh, we take uh, text of this heading and we wrap it up in, in, in a hyperlink uh, that points to, uh, to this heading inside the document. So we have to pull uh, the ID attributes of this heading and paste it into the H, the, the A, the task, HTML task. So this is enough to, to build a list of headings uh, in the document with hyperlinks. Uh, we may need one more tag because uh, usually we will want to have uh, both the TLC and uh, and the original document. So we need one more tag to concatenate these two things together, like like here. And now after defining this tag, we can take any document, uh, just an arbitrary document, and tag it, tag it with add. The TLC, and it's enough to uh, to get get the table of contents automatically. Uh, here you can see the output of uh, of this example. Uh, after rendering, we have the table of contents and we have the original document, and you can see that headings are copied from here to here, and we have uh, correct hyperlinks that point to these headings in the document. Uh, I have to mention that uh, this kind of advanced functionality is uh, to some extent also available in other countries of languages. So if you're interested, you can, uh, you can compare, you can check how these things work in uh, Marco, Jinja, Pope. These are languages that provide also some language features, some language structures that allow you to. Uh, 
to build these reusable pieces of code. Uh, it's only available in more advanced templating engines. I think the simplest ones don't, don't provide that. However, even if you go to Marco or Ginger or Pope, you will see that uh, they, the, the syntax they provide quite convoluted. It doesn't, often it doesn't fit very well in the syntax of other elements of the language. Uh, in hypertag, these custom tags behave exactly the same as standard tags. So we can use them in all the same context, in all the same places where we can use standard tags. There's no difference in syntax. And uh, the most important difference is that hypertag implements two-stage rendering. Uh, so uh, when you uh, when you define uh, this hypertag, uh, with, uh, the, uh, which takes a body attribute. Uh, here, uh, this body is not rendered yet. Uh, it's partially rendered. It's only partially rendered. Uh, all the all the expressions here in such a body are evaluated, and all control blocks are have been executed. But otherwise, uh, this body still uh, preserves its tree structure. You can analyze the tag structure. Uh, of, of of this body, and you can analyze it and you can manipulate it, uh, which is not really possible in any other templating language. So this is something very unique for for hypertag. And of course, uh, we should add this this uh, uh, aspect related to readable and clean code, because in Marco and in Jinja, this code is not readable as as much as it is in hypertag. Marco and Jinja use this traditional approach of uh, injecting foreign syntax into HTML documents. Uh, I think the last, last thing uh, I'll mention is about importing things. Uh, it's when you can define uh, custom tags. Of course, you'd like to reuse this hypertag in different files, in different documents, and if possible, with the import syntax. Uh, in hypertag, this import syntax uh, is similar to what you what we have in Python. Uh, you can use uh, same keyword from import. Uh, here, the import path uh, has the same structure as Python import path. So you can import from our packages, from other modules. You can use absolute import and relative import like here. Uh, you can use renaming. Like in Python with, with the keyword S. And uh, what's important is that. So, uh, thank you so much, Masin. It's a really good talk, but I think it's very informative and we are running out of time. So, uh, what I suggest happening sure. is that uh, we can carry, uh, you can carry on in the breakout room, which uh, you can uh, run the GC there to uh, you know continue the talk and maybe answer okay. some questions. Uh, there are already some questions sure. in the chat, which you can go and answer as well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.